Uh, good morning, everyone. On behalf of the Red Brick Summit 2021, we welcome you all to the first keynote session of day two. Uh, in the second ever virtual TRBS, we are extremely honored to host Mr. Rajesh Ramakrishnan, uh, a veteran with over 26 years of experience in general management, sales, and marketing. Mr. Rajesh is the managing director at Perfetti Van Miller India, the country's leading confectionery player. Rajesh is responsible for the overall operations of the com company for India and Nepal. Uh, an accomplished business leader, he has worked uh, across categories like personal care, household care, food and beverages, and confectionery. Under his leadership, Perfetti Van Miller uh, Bangladesh delivered sustained growth and achieved market leadership in 2016. Some of the notable brands include Chupa Chups, Mentos, Center Fresh, Center Fruit, uh, and Alpenlibe. So, without further ado, we'll hand it over to Mr. Rajesh. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. And uh, very happy to be with all of you today for this session. I know it's uh, 9 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday. So I hope uh, you're all suitably awake and uh, engaged. And uh, over the course of the next 45 minutes, uh, I thought I'll speak about something which, again, is not a very heavy topic, but something very close to my heart. So I hope um, uh, you find that uh, interesting and useful. So what I'll do is I'll just project my screen. So screen can come. Yeah, just want to check, is that visible? Yes, that is. Okay, super. So, um, yeah, what I thought I'll do was uh, talk about lessons in and from photography. And that's something that I'm uh, absolutely passionate about. So first thing first is somebody could ask why photography. Uh, so I'll talk a little bit about that. Some tips on how you can get good pictures using your mobile phone. And actually I put together something where, you know, there are some lessons from photography, especially for marketeers you know largely to do with uh, consumer insights and how we leverage it at property as well so hopefully we'll be able to cover most of it since it's 30 plus 15 minutes i'll go a little bit uh, fast and then maybe in the 15 minute session on questions we can cover up some of the uh, other points okay so why photography and one of the things uh, here is that you know and increasingly uh, we find it in the of course the corporate world and i'm sure you guys experience it in your uh, you know uh, college life as well is during the course of the day there are various things that uh, you know suck out our energy uh, so there are what we call energy sinks and therefore we periodically need energy sources so that we are able to maintain the energy equilibrium for ourselves and i think it's a very very important concept to think about uh, for each of us and in order to get those energy sources typically what works are having some sort of a passion so it could be music it could be art, painting for somebody, it could be sport. So for me, it's photography, right? And how does photography, how has it helped me over the years? So I started this way back in about 17 years ago. So it's not too long back as well. So I picked it up pretty late, but it's something that has really worked for me at multiple levels. So like I mentioned, photography is one of my passions. Most of the pictures that I'm going to show you are also some, some of those which I've shot uh, over the years at various uh, locations and events. Um, yeah, so one is, uh, you know, it takes me out of my comfort zone and really uh, allows me to explore things. So, you know, I used to live in Bangladesh for uh, three, three and a half years. So the one you see on the left is was taken during the Eid prayers during Ramadan, right, uh, in, inside a mosque in the afternoon prayers. Or the one in the right is shot in Nandgaon during Holi. So it really allowed me to get out of my comfort zone, go to places, seek experiences, which I would have never done otherwise. The other is about seeking new experiences. So, you know, again, uh, the one on the left is the, you know, the Pairav Mandir in Delhi, or the Kum Mela at the bottom left, or the Phuket Vegetarian Festival in Thailand. Uh, again, very, very interesting experiences. The one on the right is in uh, Burma. So again, what uh, this allows uh, me to do is to really get some, again, interesting experiences, which normally one would not get. I think this is a very important one. You know, most of the time we end up uh, thinking either about what happened in the past or we are busy planning for the future. But photography is one thing which has taught me is to be mindful of the present. Yeah, because, you know, I think the more we are able to be mindful and focus on what's happening in the present, the more we are able to lead a, you know, a fulfilling, enriched life. 
and i think that's one thing that i picked up from photography so for example this picture was uh, you know shot in uh, dhaka old dhaka and i just saw the grapes lining up against the faces and in fact this got featured in the daily shot by national geographic in 2016 and uh, the other piece i would say is i'm an engineer uh, and i always considered myself to be a left brain person but uh, again what photography has taught me is to explore my right brain and the creative side so i've had a quite a few exhibitions uh, that i've put up uh, the one on the left was an interesting one where we had to take a you know famous picture the one you see on the top left and recreate it with my own interpretation of it is the one which you see on the bottom left and actually that um, won a second prize worldwide in an instagram contest and was displayed in khan in june of 2015 So again, the point is, it allowed it has allowed me to explore my creative side as well, and that actually I would say spills in into my work as well. So whenever we are looking at uh, things at work, you always look for creative solutions to some of the problems that we have at work. And last but not the least, is something that I feel really, really good about is photography is something that. I've been actively pursuing and managed to use that to give back to society as well. So me, my daughter, and actually my wife, all three of us, we run something called My Daughter is Precious, which is uh, it actually originally started as an uh, initiative to spread uh, gender equality. So we used to take Polaroid pictures of fathers and daughters, and actually tell the father that your daughter is as precious as your son. Treat her well and give her a good education. So it started like that. but then over a period of time we have also started financially supporting uh, girls through their graduation and uh, currently you know so these are the some of the pictures where which we took and we used to have a, a facebook page where we put them up and actually spread the awareness for gender equality but over a period of time now we support uh, almost 50 girls through um, graduation uh, so that they can study and get themselves a job and become economically independent so that's that's a little bit about what has photography done to me in my uh, in my life and i think one of the things i would leave you with is if if you already have a passion that's absolutely fantastic but if you don't it's very very um, good to have a passion because what passion does is it infuses energy right and i spoke about energy sinks and energy sources energy sinks will be there i mean that's how life is but if you are able able to have more energy sources that can actually act as a restoration of the energy equilibrium for us so that would be my uh, you know suggestion to everybody to see how we can uh, develop passions or rekindle old passions so that we are able to maintain our energy equilibrium which in turn allows us to leverage our full potential and perform to our best so with that i'll move on to the second piece of like i said i have some simple tips on photography uh, again these are you know no rocket science but uh, just how you can get good pictures using uh, your mobile phone one of course is uh, composition second is how we can get different perspectives use of lines and geometry creating depth with a 2d image use of reflections and how to get good portraits and i'll just spend a, maybe a couple of minutes on uh, each of them so composition um so you know what is composition in a way it's about guiding the viewer's eye through the most important elements of the work right in a particular order and typically composition also is about what you keep in the picture and equally important what you keep out of the picture right very often you will find on you know tree sticking out of somebody's head if only you had moved a little bit or got the other person to move a bit you could have avoided that so as much as it's important to see what you want in the picture also keep in mind what you don't want and again there are many rules and rules are meant to be broken but uh, one of the rules which really helps is to see if you can get the point of interest in uh, any of those red dots in your frame i think that's a you know useful uh, way to look at enhancing the aesthetic of the picture i just show share a couple of examples so this was shot in dhaka during janmashtami again if the face was dead in the center probably it would not have looked as um, as nice so yeah just off setting it a little bit makes it look interesting similarly this is from my exhibition and again you find that the main subject is not bang in the middle but say slightly off center to the left 
and you can see there is a on the top right there is a small open watermelon which again amongst the sea of green adds a bit of a dash of red to it and makes makes the image interesting so just just things to keep in mind as you you know go about shooting pictures second is uh, we spoke about it also photography actually helps me to get a different perspective and i think when you take a picture it's always good to look at things from multiple angles right don't don't have to shoot it immediately look at it walk around a bit see what's the nice uh, the best angle to capture the picture from and then shoot it and very often you can find the results can be absolutely stunning so for example this is a simple fruit basket somebody was carrying a basket of fruit but rather than shoot from the front i decided to shoot from the top and it just gives you a very interesting perspective and of course i was also lucky that the basket of apples had a few oranges as well so that made it a little bit more interesting again uh, you know i would have asked in a interactive session i would have said if you can guess what this is uh, this i just shot from my phone actually when i was just walking along the street in chennai and actually it's a uh, you know it's four ducks and their reflection in the water and i've just flipped the picture 90 degrees but you know it can just give you a completely different perspective when you look at it uh, slightly differently right so this is just the ducks and their shadows and uh, for me uh, whenever i've shown it to people they all have absolutely multiple interpretations of what it could possibly be again uh, shot in a shop in uh, dhaka i just thought rather than shoot that guy straight which would have been just a very average boring picture <clears throat> i looked up and i saw uh, the whole ceiling was full of mirrors and the reflection on the ceiling of this guy reading the newspaper was really uh, interesting the other is our mind is actually trained uh, you know to look at uh, patterns and geometry so leading lines and curves and if you are able to you know you automatically end up following the flow of those lines so if you are able to use that to your advantage that can actually again enhance the aesthetics of your pictures so if you see here on the left you know your eye automatically tends to follow the the flow of the water yeah or in the other one you know you ought you follow the lines of the railway tracks and again uh, and it, what makes this picture interesting we spoke about composition is that one of course there are four women dressed in nice colorful clothes uh, at the top of the picture but also at the bottom of the picture there is this guy in black walking out of the picture right so again it just provides a very interesting contrast so if if i were to look at this picture without that guy there it may not be as interesting this is shot in bhutan again if you look at it the i tends to follow the flow of the river uh, along the curves so that's that's what i mean so how can you use geometry to your advantage to get some good pictures the the, the other piece is around you know how can you get depth because pictures at the end of the day are 2d but are there ways in which you can provide another interesting uh, dimension to it by making them 3d so one of the ways of doing it is to incorporate some foreground elements into the picture so if you are able to do that it gives a bit of a depth to the picture so i'll just share a few examples again here is just a guy in his boat and with his dog probably crossing the ganges uh, in banaras uh, so i included the you know the blouses in the frame and one of course they add an interesting colorful element to the whole picture but also give a sense of depth to the picture we saw the picture in the beginning but again because the boys were included because of the different layers in the picture the inclusion of the foreground gives an element of depth one other thing that we can find and if you look around there are so many areas where there is reflection that happens right from any polished surface so can those be used to get some interesting pictures so this guy is my um, you know category manager when i was working in bangladesh and he was taking a picture of something and i just saw a water body in front of him so i decided to take a picture now just his picture would not have been as interesting but the reflection of him as well makes for interesting viewing
And the second uh, one, I mean, Jama Masjid is something that most of us who are, you know, who have lived in Delhi or familiar with Delhi would have gone at some point of time or the other. But to me, what was interesting is there were these little bowls of uh, water and the reflection of the different parts of the mosque in the water made for interesting viewing. This was shot in uh, Srinagar, the Dal Lake. Again, what you don't see in the sky is the golden hues of the sun and the sunlight. But when you look at the reflection, it reveals a little bit of what lies beneath. And the last one really is um, around, uh, you know, uh, some tips for taking uh, good portraits. Uh, you know, typically what happens is portraits are something that uh, uh, are best taken candid. And what happens is um, we are always wary that, oh, what happens if I take a picture and if they are unhappy with me or, you know, how would they react to it, etc. So if you're wanting to take candid pictures, the best would be to take the picture and then, you know, just go and have a chat with them and say, is it okay? And maybe even show them the picture. Or sometimes if they say, no, I don't want you to take my picture, the best would be to be respectful of that and delete the picture in front of them. But that should not stop us from experimenting with, uh, you know, taking portraits. So these are portraits that I've shot over the years for uh, various calendars. So over the last 10 years, I've shot calendars for, uh, you know, different NGOs uh, so that we could uh, raise money for a particular cause. And these pictures are from uh, those calendars. And I think what also helps is sometimes, like when I shot these people, I didn't know where they were going to be, what they were going to be wearing, etc. I just had a concept in mind. And one of the things is how you quickly adapt yourself to the environment. And the reason for using black and white is also to neutralize and mitigate the impact of the variables. So what color are they wearing? Are, where are they located, etc. So you take tight shots with black and white so that you know none of those uh, interfere with the concept that you want to communicate. So just to summarize, uh, we spoke about uh, the importance of composition, um, how we can get uh, different perspectives, the use of uh, leading lines, creating depth with uh, foreground elements to give a 3D effect, use of reflections to enhance the picture, and how can we get good portraits. So that uh, sort of brings me to the end of the first uh, section of it, which was really, we spoke about how has photography impacted my life and how it has enhanced uh, my uh, work and what I do. Uh, and then we spoke about some simple tips on how we could get uh, you know good pictures using our um, mobile phone what we'll do in the next um, you know 10 uh, minutes or so in uh, 12 minutes is talk about some lessons from photography which can actually be linked to consumer insights and what i'll do is actually use the same six lessons that I shared as, uh, sorry, the tips that I shared on how you could uh, use your phone to get good pictures and sort of link them to marketing. Okay, we spoke about composition and its importance, right? And one of the things I would say is, what is composition? Like I said, it's about what you keep in the picture and also what you don't keep in the picture. So the important thing from a marketing perspective is context is critical. Consumers don't consume, of course, in isolation and therefore understanding their cultural insights and the social, societal context can become very important and critical in how you position and communicate your brand. And therefore, the role of the marketeer is to really find a meaningful role for the product and the brand in the life of the consumer. And if you find that, then you don't need to go and keep telling the consumer about what you do. The consumer will automatically start imbibing you into their lives. So for example, with Center Fresh, which is one of our uh, key brands, what we do is uh, we have a whole portfolio of uh, offerings within Center Fresh. So all of them stand for the basic premise of fresh breath confidence, but in very, very different ways. So the main one rupee gum is about fresh breath confidence anytime, anywhere. I mean, those products are available in 4 million outlets across the country. So they offer you actually fresh breath at any point of time, anywhere in a quick, convenient manner. However, if, for example, you take it to the next level where you want to get fresh breath confidence in a discreet manner, so then you have something called center fresh mints, where if you meet uh, somebody of the uh, opposite sex in a lift, for example, and you want to 
uh, strike up a conversation in a very discreet manner, which gives you instant fresh bread. You have a set, sent a fresh mince, which uh, comes again in a very you know contemporary format and so on and so forth which then allows you to get the same fresh bread confidence, but in a very different context. Or if you take, uh, for example, uh, a situation where you need long lasting fresh bread. So you go on a movie date, for example, then you have something like a center fresh three layer gum, which has got certain properties in it, which extends the period of uh, the lasting of the fresh bread. So again, the point is understand the context, the brand premise might be the same, but you tailor your product and your communication to meet the need of the audience as far as the context is concerned. The second one we spoke about was to get uh, you know multiple perspectives and we, we spoke about that. So again, with consumers also, it's very important to look at a consumer from different perspectives. Have people in your team. And I think this is a very, very important point. So you know we tend to gravitate towards people who are like-minded, which is good. But it's also important to work with people who have a different point of view. Because when you have a different point of view and when you engage in some of those conversations is when the quality of the output significantly goes up. So it's very important to have that as well. And the third part is always go wide before you dive deep. So that make sure that all views and all perspectives are explored before you start narrowing down on what you would like to actually do. So again, if I look at a consumer, uh, you know, for both scent of fruit and scent of fresh, the target audience is pretty much between say eight years and uh, say 18 years. However, we approach the consumer very differently when, uh, when you look at the two brands. So scent of fresh is all about social context, fresh breath, giving confidence to, you know, talk to the um, person of the opposite gender and so on. Whereas scent of fruit is all about individual consumption, in-home consumption, where I am at a slight low or a neutral space and I want something that will pick me up, right? So that is all about mood, ting tong and getting you uh, going, whereas center fresh is all about social context, confidence, fresh breath and so on. So it's, it's, it's a liquid filled gum, pretty much similar kind of products, but of course different, same consumer, but totally different needs groups. The third one we spoke about was use of leading lines, et cetera. And you know, if I were to sort of translate that into how it's relevant to marketing, it's about having a structured framework and approach. So map out consume, consumption occasion across day parts. Understand what is consumed, why, when, where, why. So for example, we have something called like a five W's framework. So across the entire day, you look at consumers to see what consumption occasions do they consume confectionery products. What do they consume, when, where, why, and so on. And more importantly, also the why not for your brand. So if they are seeking fresh bread, but not consuming center fresh, why is that not happening? That will then allow you to get to a nice innovation and con communication roadmap for your products and, and your brand in a very structured uh, manner. Right. So this is the kind of framework that I was talking about. And if you see the bottom right, so what happens is, there are gazillion consumption occasions through the day, but there are frameworks which will allow us to say which consumption occasions are, how big are they, and what is the right to succeed of a particular brand in a consumption occasion. So this kind of work actually allows us to do a very, very targeted, um, uh, focused positioning uh, for our brands. And we spoke about creating depth, right? Through uh, four grounds of foreground in the, in the tips. So again, here it is about digging deep to get the insights. Keep asking this question, why? Don't take something at face value. Oh, if a consumer is doing that, why are they doing it? Why? And once you get to the real crux of the issue, that's when you have the aha moment. And that allows you to find a very good sweet spot between what the brand stands for and what the product experience is. So again, if you look at something like Alpendibe, I'm sure many of you would have had the product. It's a rich melt in the mouth kind of a product, right? How we have laddered the product to the brand is by saying, you eat that product, it melts in your mouth and in a way melts away issues and brings hearts closer. So the product truth can actually be laddered to a brand benefit and what the brand stands for. Then 
then we spoke about uh, reflections use of reflection so the whole here point is about self image versus social image so are we able to truly understand what the consumers are saying sometimes they say something they mean something else right and that's where clearly articulating the role that the brand will play in driving their self and social image becomes very important and one of the things to keep in mind also is how do consumers remember your brand better if you are able to truly integrate the brand and create rituals around it right so again i'll give an example of a brand like chupa chups right it is targeted at teens so the whole point is to upage the con con confectionery consumption and build the cool portion sometimes you know teens they tend to think for example confectionery products are not for me because i've grown up however if you look at chupa chups worldwide how it is positioned it comes with these really cool quirky products so for example a lollipop filled with uh, you know chewing gum or a sour <clears throat> belt so these kind of products what they do is they significantly enhance the coolness portion and then a team actually likes to be seen with these kind of products so it's very important to understand what of it is important for the consumer and how do you build your positioning in sync with that self versus social image and the last point we spoke about was you know how to get good portraits and i think important point here is also how can we get a good understanding of the consumer and paint a nice portrait of them so keep it simple uncluttered don't complicate things keep it real let's not invent stuff let's keep it real and also keep it relevant to the cultural context what we spoke about earlier in terms of truly understanding and some of these can happen by doing home visits go and like for example when we worked on kutre and we wanted to understand tea time we used to go and sit in consumers house during the time they had tea to understand how did they go about it right what did they consume for tea why did they consume what who all were they, there during the tea time occasion and so on and so forth this then gives you a very good perspective of who the consumers is what are they looking for and what drives some of their needs and if you are able to get a very good portrait of the consumer then you are in a greater place to actually position your brands really well against the different needs of the consumers and then actually leverage that to the best extent possible so to summarize uh, one of the things i would like to leave you with is very often we complain of lack of resources that i don't have this i don't have time money especially in the corporate context uh, but i think resources is never the problem it's a lack of resourcefulness so if you are able to really be more resourceful and if i were to translate that into hindi uh, if i have that jugadness in me then we'll pretty much find solution to any kind of problem so with that i conclude and i would urge you all to take the leap thank you I think we're pretty much on time and i'm happy to take questions sure that was a great presentation rakesh rajesh uh, it was interesting to see how you build upon the concepts of photography into like it leverage on to how one could build a brand and sort of take it over from there so a couple of questions from the audience i'll mm. start with the one we got from arun so it says uh, given the presence in over 150 like over the country, uh, in many of the geographies and countries what are the, some of the enlightening discoveries or similarities that you have uncovered about the preferences of the customers so can you just repeat that question given sure. the geographical given the geographical boundaries and like uh, your presence in different countries what are the some of the enlightening similarities and differences that you have uncur uncovered about the preferences of your customers yeah i mean i think that's a extremely broad question so difficult to answer <laughs> but i'll just give a um, couple of examples say from a confectionery category right sure so uh, we spoke about a few uh, need states so if i take a need state like fresh breath to get social confidence right that is a universal need state so whether you are sitting in india or mexico or uh, sri lanka i think that need state is a absolutely relevant uh, need state now how you communicate could change right uh, uh, you might find a country like uh, say the us or europe a little bit more progressive so you might show uh, communication which is pushing the boundary a little bit more whereas in a market like india or say uh, any of the middle east markets you might might want to be a little bit more 
relevant to the you know the cultural context of the market but a need state like fresh breath confidence or a need state like pick me up which i was talking about you know which energizes me and gives me a lift i think these are pretty much universal need states no matter which part of the world you go to but what is important is then how do you leverage that need state in a social and a cultural context for your market sure so um, i'll move on to the next one so it says how does one understand the cultural slash social context of a consumer so how do they go about figuring those yeah i think the two ways one is of course keep eyes and ears open i mean even as a, even if you're not a marketer i think it's always good i mean i don't know for example like we all live in a country which is as big and as complex as europe right it's 25 different countries within or 30 different countries within our country so how many of us really take the effort to go and travel across the country see the different um, you know parts of the country experience the culture there and understand the social uh, fabric of those places i think that kind of an immersion definitely gives us a lot of insights in terms of how um, the, the different uh, cultural contexts are and how the social fabric is and that deep understanding then allows us to get to some insights which then can be translated into very strong propositions for the brands sure uh the next one is it asks on a personal note like can you share the origin of any one of your offerings and what has been your personal favorite origin of one of my sorry what offerings the brand offerings like the different brands you have so the product offerings that they create so like what was the origin of that or how did you come up with the idea of the product and then what has been your personal uh, favorite across the brands yeah i think personal favorite would probably be alpenlibe can- candy the caramel i think it's a great product and it's a small uh, nice affordable treat which you can eat any time after a meal or you know just just like that as a, a nice little uh, dessertish kind of product so that's that's probably a favorite i think uh, in terms of uh, creation of products obviously uh, some of the products have existed in the past and some we have uh, created but i would say one of the interesting products that we created is the uh, chupa chup uh, gum filled lollipop right uh, because like i said uh, lollipop is typically seen as something that the small kids eat right maybe at the age of 5 to 10 or whatever but we wanted to make lollipop cool for the teens also so we came up with this whole idea that kids uh, teens find it cool to chew gum right so why not create a lollipop which has got some really exciting flavors but as you you know start sucking on the lollipop and eat it you have a chewing gum inside it which you can also chew and then that that makes you feel cool so i think that's a that's a very interesting um, uh, example of how you are able to truly understand what the consumer is looking for and able to offer it to him uh, in a in an interesting manner hmm. so the next one sort of builds upon the chupa chup itself so it uh, says across that there was a there's a video about a testing center in bangladesh like how are these test centers or locations shows and like what are the challenges in the expansion to a global audience sorry i'm not aware of this uh, test center in bangladesh uh, so maybe somebody can elaborate i'm not sure what i what that is about some I, i'm assuming that they're talking in reference to like the test center where the participants can come in and try different flavors or something like that and like yeah, we don't have anything like that in bangladesh <laughs> usually the way we do research is mm-hmm. we go to consumers randomly chosen to a research agency and then do the consumer work with them to understand both product preferences likability for the communication and so on and so forth. okay mm. the next one we have is uh, can you talk a bit more about the how the covid pandemic has changed the relationship between the confectionery industry and the online channel like both in delivery and promotion yeah so covid has been tough for everybody mm. uh, if you look at it historically the confectionery uh, category presence on online channels is actually fairly limited because what happens in india especially and i'm talking india is that uh, most of our products we sell in 1 rupee in mono packs so that's not something that um, is obviously sellable in um, in uh, the online channel so the important thing for online channel is to get a good portfolio at much higher price points so that's a currently work in progress so in the last 18 months we have significantly accelerated our journey on online sales and we can see the results of it but i think it's still very very much the tip of the iceberg and there is a long way to go okay uh 
the next one is we have is talks about the seasonal trend of the so it goes along like since this is an industry where seasonal trends are common and like Im- impulse purchase is a sort of a very more major motivating factor like uh, how do you forecast the demand and what are the challenges in doing so you know so we have various tools for demand forecasting obviously mm-hmm. you know we use those which give, give a trend and then we layer that on with what are the competitive contexts what are the kind of uh, plans that we have in terms of marketing spends what do we have in terms of trade uh, plans so when you layer all of that then you get a reasonable uh, estimate of what we are likely to sell and then mm. of course uh, we use our wisdom at the end of it on top of that to uh, then sort of um, you know temper it to uh, the right levels correct uh So the last one we have is like uh, uh so there are a lot of enthusiasts i think that was all the major questions but uh, just written general trip or tip or advice for like there's a lot of marketing in- enthusiasts that are sort of attending the session so any specific tips for them on how to build a long term trust with their consumers and like build a brand image yeah well, i mean like i said a couple of things one keep it simple right consumers mm-hmm. also like i mean you imagine yourself you're a consumer as well right we can do mm-hmm. various products so we don't want somebody come and tell us very complicated stuff so i think keeping it simple keeping it real is important and having a deep understanding of the consumer not just uh, with respect to your category but from a cultural context and a social context is very important and if you have that then you are able to get some truly deep insights which you can then leverage for your brand so keep it simple keep it real go deep to understand the consumer from its from the entire cultural context and then you are able to leverage that well and it's a great advice like many people underestimate the fact that how keeping simple things simple can sort of exponentially help you along the way so uh, that was all the questions we had and like i uh, on the behalf of the entire tbs team i would like you thank you for taking out the time and enlighten us, us with your experience and knowledge so as students who aspire to be the business leaders the learnings from this session will help us in understanding and sort of navigating the world of consumer insights and instilling a sense of consumer centricity and how to build brands uh, on this note also we'd like to uh, take and uh, thank our title sponsor state bank of india uh, TRBS 2021 is powered by JRT Jewelers and we'd also like to thank Perfetti Van Mill for our business partner and either viewer knowledge partner. Thank you Rajesh it's been a pleasure hosting you. Sure thank you thanks uh, for giving me this opportunity and uh, take care good luck stay safe.